Bhagavad Gita as it is. And we are on chapter 14, Prabhuji. Chapter 14 is called the Three Modes of Material Nature. And today we are on text 17, Prabhuji. So, Prabhuji, shall we recite the shlokas and then do word to word? Yes. Uh, let's continue as we usually do. And today the perfect is a uh, long perfect. So, okay, Shashwin, is it possible for you to recite the shloka for us, please? Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Satvasagnyayate gnyanam Rajaso loba eva cha Ramauda moha chamaso Bavato gnana eva cha Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Lata Mataji, can you do the word to word? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Satvat. 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 From the mood of goodness. From the mood of goodness. Sanjayati. Sanjayati. Develops. Develops. Jnanam. Jnanam. Knowledge. Knowledge. Rajasa. Rajasa. From the mood of passion. From the mood of passion. Loba, loba, greed, greed, eva, eva, certainly, certainly, cha, cha, also, also, pramada, pramada, madness, madness, moha, moha, and illusion, and illusion, tamasha. Tamasha. From the mood of ignorance. From the mood of ignorance. Bhavata. Bhavata. Develop. Develop. Agnyanam. Agnyanam. Nonsense. Nonsense. Eva. Eva. Certainly. Certainly. Sha. Sha. Also. Also. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Prabhuji, shall we read the translation and then the purport? Uh, yeah, well, yes. We, we can take turns. Uh, who would like to read the translation? Renuka Mataji, would you like to read the translation? Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. From the mode of goodness, real knowledge develops. From the mode of passion, Greed develops, and from the mode of ignorance, develop foolishness, madness, and illusion. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So who would like to read the first paragraph? I'll read the first paragraph. All right. Hare Krishna. You, you decide where the paragraph ends. Yes, Roji. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Perfect by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Since the present civilization is not very congenial to the living entities, Krishna consciousness is recommended. Through Krishna consciousness, society will develop the mode of goodness. When the mode of goodness is developed, people will see things as they are. In the mode of ignorance, People are just like animals and cannot see things clearly. In the mode of ignorance, for example, they do not see that by killing one animal, they are taking the chance of being killed by the same animal in the next life. Because people have no education in actual knowledge, they become irresponsible. To stop this irresponsibility, education for developing the mode of goodness of the people in general must be there. When they are actually educated in the mode of goodness, they will become sober in full knowledge of things as they are. Then people will be happy and prosperous. 
even if the majority of people aren't happy and prosperous, if a certain percentage of the population develops Krishna consciousness and becomes situated in the mode of goodness, then there is the possibility of peace and prosperity all over the world. Hare Krishna. So any, any questions or discussion at this point? Guruji, why are they saying that even if a small percentage of people are Krishna consciousness, then they will be that will be enough for peace and prosperity? Yeah, that, that's, that's a good question. Uh, Srila Prabhupada would, would answer that, uh, that they will have enough influence. They will have enough, to, and it's assuming the 10% would be adults who have voting, voting power. And, uh, hopefully, some of them have political positions. So he felt that the ripple effect of, of yeah, would have an effect. And also, if we think how the more mantras are chanted, the whole atmosphere becomes uh, elevated in, in vibration. So if you have that many people who are regularly reciting mantras, uh, it has an effect upon the whole world. There's, uh, there's been some studies done. I heard there were uh, some thousand uh, there uh, of the Buddhist uh, path, but uh, they got together and they were chanting mantra. And, you know, there's certain machines that are able to measure uh, electromagnetic frequencies. And even on the other side of the world, uh, these researchers uh, felt that uh, they could show the effect of these thousands of, of monks, can't they? Yeah. So would someone else would like to read the next paragraph? Would somebody like to read the next paragraph? Pramila Mataji? Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. I don't, I just joined. I'm not too sure exactly where. Is that from there for? Yes, otherwise. Otherwise, if the world is devoted to modes of passion and ignorance. Um, is that 14, 7? 17. 17. Oh. 14, 17. Uh, Mataji, can somebody read? Otherwise, I'll slow down things. I have to find 17. Okay. okay. Um, Anybody else would like to read? Hare Krishna, I can read Mataji. Thank you very much, Ren, for Mataji. Hare Krishna. Otherwise, if the world is devoted to the modes of passion and ignorance, there can be no peace or prosperity. In the mode of passion, people become greedy and their hankering for sense enjoyment has no limit. One can see that even if one has enough money and adequate arrangements for sense gratification, there is neither happiness or peace of mind. That is not possible because one is situated in the mode of passion. If one wants happiness at all, his money will not help him. He has to elevate himself to the mode of goodness by practicing Krishna consciousness. When one is engaged in the mode of passion, not only is he mentally unhappy, but his profession and occupation are always very troublesome. He has to devise some, so many plans and schemes to acquire enough money to maintain his status. <coughs> more miserable, in the mode of ignorance, people become mad being distressed by the circumstances, they take shelter of intoxication and thus they sink further into ignorance. Their future is in, in life is very dark. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Rena Kumataji, for volunteering to read. Prabhuji, so what Any discussion or questions about this last paragraph that was read? 
Guruji, it says that in the mode of um, ignorance and passion as well, uh, people are not really mentally happy. Uh, yet we see that a lot of people with, uh, in the mode of ignorance, they are holidaying and enjoying themselves and they seem very happy. So uh, we feel that they are uh, happy from the outside. Maybe they are unhappy from inside, Prabhuji. And also, how long is it? So they go to the beach. They go to the beach in Kenya and they're having a good time and family. But how long is that? Three, four hours? Maybe they go for the weekend and then they're back home. Right? And probably at home, it doesn't look the same that they're probably. So it's so short. You know, here in America and other places of the world, they have these entertainment parks. I'm sure you've heard Walt Disney, Universal Studios. Uh, around the world, they have these places. And people sometimes plan a year ahead or some months ahead that we're going we're gonna to go and have a good time. We're going to go to Universal Studios and it's going to be a lot of fun. And meanwhile, they're, they're doing their work. And, you know, there's different challenges, but they think, oh, we're going to Universal Studios in a few months or wherever it may be. Uh, so this, this, this idea that I'm not happy now, I'm feeling distressed, but in the future, I'll be happy. So that is, it's a very, uh, Srila Prabhupada would use the word tottering, you know, just like if we try and balance something, the slightest little breath will make the thing fall over. So yeah, there is, it's not that there's nothing. We're not crazy people saying there's no experience of pleasure, but it's very temporary. And it's, so that's passionate and it's mixed. Uh, you know, uh, I have some experience, but many, you know, you're, you're, you're traveling to these places and the children are challenging. When are we gonna be there? When are we gonna eat? I'm tired and maybe we have a headache, and, right? But we're, we're, we're pushing on, we're, we're on our way to the beach. Right? So that, that, that it's mixed. And then maybe we hurt our ankle when we go somewhere. I knew a lady, she uh, was planning to go on a tour of Europe, visit a few countries with her son and her husband, you know, an in, in innocent kind of journey. And I think the first or second day, she badly sprained her ankle. So this is material happiness. So yeah, you know, there is, but how long does it last? And it's mixed. Whereas we're understanding that there's, a, there's an example given in the Vedas that there's a deer, there's a deer called a musk deer, and it has a perfume underneath its tail. And the glands are sometimes collected to produce a special kind of perfume. And the deer chases its tail. The deer is, oh, that's, where is that? And the deer is spinning around like dogs chase their tails sometimes. And the deer is spinning around and doesn't realize that the, the aroma is part, is part of its body. So in the same way, it's described that we souls, we have already an ocean of happiness within us. There's actually no necessity to use this body to have happiness. But we're just very habituated. We're very useful. And the other side of it is that happiness in this world often means that the distress stops. 
if you think about it, I'm not happy at work. I don't know about there, but here in America, it, you know, there's a saying, uh, they have this TGIF, thank God it's bright. I think it's around the world. So they joke. Uh, but in many situations, the people actually aren't really happy being at work and they are waiting for Friday. And they're practically living for Friday, which doesn't sound very good. And I worked at this auto remanufacturing factory where they, the workers would come and they would rebuild auto parts and they weren't paid that much, many of them. And I would hear them, I would walk through the factory, uh, 40, 50 men, a couple of women. And uh, then they would come back on Monday. And I, I actually heard a few times, oh, I feel so sick. Oh, I did this, I drank too much. I... So that's sad. That's actually really sad. If you think about it, imagine some animal in a cage waiting to get fed or waiting to go out. And then by going out or eating, it suffered more. That's really, that's really sad. But because so many, I think because so many of us, that's the way we live, we take it as normal. Right? They joke about it at work. It's like people who are in a kind of hell and they've gotten so used to being in the hell that it's just another day in hell and on Friday we're going to the movies. <laughs> and I, I'm not laughing at, at them or, or anything, but it, it's just, uh, it's really sad. So, Srila Prabhupada, he was, when we hear him, I believe we can sense that he truly felt compassion. He felt the suffering of his brothers and sisters. I like reading. It's possible to read his uh, essays for the Back to God magazine, Back to Godhead magazine from the 1940s to 1950s. And it's interesting to hear how he speaks about spirituality. It's not different than uh, later on, but it, it, he does put it in a certain kind of language. And also, uh, at least for me, it's really apparent uh, because almost every article speaks about looking at the world and how people are not happy, how they're suffering, how there's so much divorce and animals are being abused, and killed, and he feels it. And he left Vrindavan, as we know, at the age of 70. So who does that? You know, who retires? And then goes to another country with $7 in there, with 40 rupees in their pocket. Who does that? Why would they? Maybe they really want to go to America. <laughs> Uh, finally, I've made it to America, such a fabulous place. I've heard about it for so many years. But that wasn't his mood. He, he's, and also, right, he experienced two heart attacks on the way over. I mean, if I had bad pain in my heart, you know, take me to the nearest hospital. You know, maybe some other day I'll think about this trip, but I'm not going to think about this trip right now until I get this taken care of. So we can appreciate how truly he felt the suffering of humanity and how truly 
he was uh, devoted to Krishna. Really. Uh, there are the prayers of Srila Prabhupada when he landed in New York, or he landed in Boston, right? That some of you have read the prayers that he offered to Lord Krishna when, he, when the ship arrived at Boston. Have you? Has anyone read them? Find them. Find them. I'll send you a link. Uh, the prayers when he landed in Boston. They are amazingly, they are amazing. And I, won't, I don't remember all of the, the verses, but he was feeling himself. He said, uh, my dear Lord Krishna, I don't know why you have brought me here. Everyone is absorbed in passion and ignorance. Just working, waiting for Friday and suffering, and they're killing so many cows and other animals. So, I, But he said, I guess you have some business here. And he said, my dear Lord Krishna, uh, he said, your power is amazing. You have brought me here, which is inconceivable. Please make me dance, make me dance, make me dance as an instrument in your hand. And this is after suffering to a heart attack. So that's who it's just inconceivable how he did that, how he prayed like that. And also within those prayers, he addressed Lord Krishna as his dear friend. Very amazing, I'll share this. He said, my dear Lord Krishna, I am waiting to, uh, be with you and the cowherd boys and playing in the fields of Vrindavan. So such pure devotion. He really loved Krishna. Such love. And on the basis of that love, just like a mother takes care of her child, or a friend takes care of a friend, in that mood of love and compassion, he came to America and he carried Krishna once. Krishna loves us. Krishna really cares about us. We can see that manifested in the person of Peter Prabhupada. So to connect this to the purport, we kind of went off, but it's connected in, in a very wonderful way, I feel. Uh, Srila Prabhupada is making the point in this purport. Lord Krishna is making the point, right? It's Krishna. That you'll never find deep peace on the outside. It's not that there's nothing there, but it won't bring satisfaction. And not only that, if you get too addicted to it, you'll take another birth in this world and have to experience all the suffering again. So the first, so Srila Prabhupada writes in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, I remember almost word for word, the first business of a devotee is to cultivate sattva guna, is to live our life, to work, Whatever, however, whatever we're doing, we should cultivate sattva guna. That will bring more real peace in our heart. It'll give us strength. Uh, and it will, Srila Prabhupada said, it will open the doors so we can understand Krishna more. Because it's almost a mechanical thing for people, you know, sometimes we try and share Krishna consciousness with someone. And it's just so hard. They seem unable to, to understand, right? And it's, it's almost mechanical. It's almost as if they have some chain. And it's because of this passion and ignorance. So Srila Prabhupada pointed out to us that following the regular principles as strictly as we can and rising early 
and eating pure food and chanting Hare Krishna, this, just, just those, just those, will keep, will bring us into Satvaguna more and more and keep us like a seatbelt in a car. Because we are going to experience different challenges in life. It is going to be problematic at times. It will. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but just like when we ride in a car, you know, even if it's a bumpy road, or sometimes you're in a boat, but if you have your belt on, you won't fall out, right? Or even if there's an accident, you won't go flying through the windshield. So we are going to meet challenges within personal relationships, with our body, with our work. So many things are going to happen. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but this seatbelt of our sadhana, of the instructions of Lord Krishna, will keep us in the car, <laughs> will keep us in the boat that's crossing this material life. And that's very valuable, isn't it? So I feel for myself, you know, I have been on this path for about almost 46 years. And uh, Lord Krishna, he wants us. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to go back to Godhead. He really does. Uh, and so he has given his Bhagavad Gita, he has given these instructions. They're very, very important. They're very powerful. We are instructed to try and understand these teachings. We don't have to be a big scholar, but we should know what is passion. What, if I look within my mind, how do I know that I'm acting or talking or thinking passionately or ignorant? We should know what this is. Just like when we go to cook and we see that the vegetables are moldy. Oh, that means don't use it or cut off the part. Something has to be done. So the same way we should hear Bhagavad Gita uh, so that we understand, you know, am I all right? You know, we want to be able to drive in our life with the headlights on so that we can see and know. So Bhagavad Gita is our headlight so that we can travel without following, falling, falling into a big hole and missing the, miss, and becoming more miserable and losing the chance to go back to Godhead. I think this is true. Very valuable. And so isn't it real? No, this isn't just some philosophy, which <laughs> it's um, something in the head. But, but we can see people are, right? They drink, they feel really bad. They have a divorce or a child dies or they lose their job or, and they drink or they take drugs and it just becomes more miserable. It, it doesn't become better ultimately so i mean sometimes people say what is the value of this of religion what is the value of bhagavad gita you know you're just living for the future no we're not we have the best life the most peaceful life the most uh inwardly happy life that a human can have well you know you still have problems yes we do but we have the strength to pass through them and we have more inner peace and we don't get ourselves into more trouble. Aren't these real benefits? These are real benefits today, not just in the future. I think. But any, any discussion or comment? Any discussion or comments, kindly unmute. We have among us Mansi Ganga Mataji, Danvatranam Mataji. Thank you for joining in. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. 
I I totally agree with what you've said, you know, sort of having a work in life and being busy and looking forward to Friday and not looking forward to Monday, going back to work, um, <clears throat> trying to, to fit in everything, but, you know, sort of right after retiring and focusing a lot more on my spirituality. And so it's a total beautiful inner peace and contentment and happiness, you know, so I understand everything you said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in the, in the, there's another advice from Srila Prabhupada that we should always try and appreciate what is the difference between a life with Krishna consciousness and a life without. Uh, I won't go into a lot of details, but uh, different points in my spiritual path, I felt I was really lacking as much appreciation as I should have. So I, I prayed. I pray to Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda that I could have more appreciation. And I got this idea that, uh, you know, when we sang the prayers in the morning to Peter Prabhupada, I, I tried to think harder how they applied to me personally. Just like there's the Guru Puja. My only wish is to have my consciousness purified by the words emanating from your lotus feet. Attachment to your lotus feet is the perfection that fulfills all desires. So I got this idea to try and go a little deeper to make it personal. What, what does that really mean? Attachment to your lotus feet. What, is that, what does it really mean? Does it mean, I mean, does it mean I'm hanging on to his feet and he's physically dragging me across the floor? Does that, is that what it means? What? And for myself, I got the understanding that through his book, through his words, by attachment to that, to his books, to his writing, uh, it's the, it was leading me to the perfection of my life. And that made it very real for me. And so anyways, uh, so this advice of, of Srila Prabhupada to try and appreciate what is the difference. Uh, sometimes I got another idea that sometimes during the, the singing of the prayers, I would think about other people in the neighborhood. I would think, what are they doing right now? You know, I tried to think about it, that what, what really is the difference right now between my existence and the people down the street? Which it's, it's very important uh, to develop gratefulness and appreciation. Because what will happen when things are difficult if we don't have sufficient gratefulness? and appreciate any relationship, but in a marriage, if the husband fails to have sufficient gratefulness and appreciation for all that his wife brings into his life or vice versa, you know, there's always occasionally some tension in a marital relationship or in parents and children. And if we don't have sufficient appreciation and gratefulness, it's a lot easier for the relationship to break, isn't it? So I, I think that, that that's very valuable advice of Sri Dupal. It's something, to, something we can actually do. Any discussion about that or questions? And that will give us a yeah. won't it? I mean, if we have appreciation, then we will we will feel inspired to 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 to, to do the Krishna consciousness and to do service. You know, I, at least for myself, 
when I, when I notice that I'm not feeling so enthusiastic, I think it must be that I'm not, I'm not having the same level of appreciation for my, for, for my spiritual master, for Krishna. Right? You know, it's just like if a husband uh, says, oh, uh, could you please help me with this? And the wife looks like she doesn't want to do it. I mean, I'm just saying something. Or you ask your child, oh, could you please bring me this thing from the other room? And the child just scowls at you and don't bother me. That's awful. Considering how much the mother or the father, you know, generally does for the child. The child should be enthusiastic. Yes, what can I do for you? You know, you've given me this game that I'm playing. You've given me the food. You, you, do, you give me everything. Of course, I want to do something for you. But if the child is not enthusiastic, you know, aside from being really ill or sick or something, it may indicate that they, 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 they're not appreciating you, right? Uh, you know, right? It's very simple. And so the same with us. If we want to increase our enthusiasm in Krishna consciousness, a large part of it is to increase our appreciation for what it is. So any comment, discussion? Any comments or discussion? Kindly unmute. I think it's important to, Prabhuji, as you mentioned, when we sing the prayers or when we recite the prayers, it's good to uh, now think about it. I mean, we are in Krishna consciousness since the last year, and we've been reciting it. Again. So I never thought of getting deeper into it and uh, breaking it down to my level, but um, uh, you've given a fantastic idea that we should be doing that. And yeah, it is so powerful. So powerful. And, you know, part of it, as I shared, I pray to Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda. Uh, and Srila Prabhupada, uh, you know, we hear him, or maybe we don't. But he's so much stressed, especially in the beginning, that we offer respect and do puja and sing kirtan be before Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda. In fact, in the eighth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, eighth. Uh, Eighth chapter of the Ali Lila, there's a discussion about the uh, about Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And in a purport, he writes, or Sri Bhakti Siddhanta writes, that actually a neophyte should not indulge in chanting Hare Krishna, but instead to chant Goranga Nityananda, Jai Sachinanda. And then in the next pur purport, he explains, we do both. It's extremely important. Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are, uh, you know, the, the Krishna in his mood of Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda are inconceivably kind. And, and you know, the, uh, you may know better than I, the different demigods, you know, by worshiping Ganeshji, it's expected one can be clear of obstacles, it gets pure opulence. I worship Parvati, one may get a good husband and you know, I'm a good wife, you know, etc. There's different benefits by uh, doing puja for different demigods. The specific benefit of doing puja and pleasing Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda is that they will bless us with more appreciation. Especially if we want. 
and we sit and we chant Hare Krishna in front of Lord Chaitanya and Tulsi, or we sing bhajan for them because Lord Chaitanya and Tananda completely enjoy Krishna Kirtan. And we pray in our heart that if you would be so kind, may I have a little more appreciation. Whew. They will. That's what they want to give. That is the purpose of Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda to give within our heart. Appreciate. So I want to pass that along to something that is an instruction and something which is so very, very much help my Christian. I have done it. I still need it. And I'm a long way from being perfect. But I can say that I did I did try it. <laughs> Actually I, I, I'm one of these skeptics when I first met. You know, I had this kind of uh, over intelligence uh, I have to feel it. I want to see Krishna. Anyway, so uh I was feeling the need for appreciation. And so I read that and I felt like in a scientific way, all right, I'll test it. <laughs> so, uh, well, I mean, it's, that's not bad. So I, I sat, I got, I got a, uh, I sat down in front of Lord Chaitanya Nityananda in front of Panchatattva and I chanted Hare Krishna and I prayed, please, may I please appreciate. And, uh, I had to fasten my seatbelt because the reciprocation, it was like taking off on a rocket. It was just amazing, just amazing. So it's very important to pay attention always. You know, even we have deities of Radha and Krishna. So, uh, very important, you know, especially those who are from India or, or the Indian ethnicity. Uh, you know, they, they know oh, I know Krishna, I worship Krishna. And they may they may actually be mature, but we should be careful. We may not be as mature as we think. Okay, I'll stop. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for sharing that. Uh, I think these were pearls of wisdom. And uh, I, I think it is a moment of our need. That's why you shared this uh, experience of yours with us. So thank you so much. We are really grateful. Are there any questions or comments before we close the session? I think there are no questions or comments. I'll okay. hand over to Prahlad. Prahlad Prabhu, are you able to close the session? Hare Krishna Prahlad Prabhu. Hare Krishna, yes. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, His Grace Dina Sharana Das Prabhu for giving us, uh, like Kirtika Mataji said, his uh, words of wisdom, uh, which enlightens us and uh, helps us go on further on the path of Krishna consciousness. Uh, so on behalf of all the devotees, uh, here, Prabhu, and uh, myself as well, we'd like to thank you for uh, taking some time and explaining all this to us so that we are able to go back home and go back to Godhead. So I'd like to request all uh, the devotees assembled here uh, to kindly please unmute yourself and let's chant the Hare Krishna Maya Mantra once for His Grace, Dina Sharana Das Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Vanja Kalpata Rubyasya, Hirva Sindhu Vaibhacha, Adhikanam Mayam Vibhyo, Vaisna Vishyo Namo 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 Namo. Shila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. His Grace Dina Sharana Das Prabhu Ki. Jai. 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 Jai
ಇದು ಪ್ರೇಮಣ್ಣ.